Join Dalton and Jacob as they discuss the ever-changing world of trading card games. TCG Buzz starts now. What's up, guys? It's your boy Dalton here from TCG Buzz. Back at it again with Jacob. Hello. Oh, oh. Hello. What was that? It's a me. Why'd you throw up the peace sign? Like, you never do that. I'm throwing you off your game today. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so we're doing something kind of different today, right? Something different. But I suppose before we get into that, we should do our plugs, right? Nah, let's just no. get straight into oh, it. Oh, okay. Let's just get straight right. into it. Uh, th- th- but if you want to, you know, follow our Instagram, we'll have a little thing pop up like right here-ish. Hopefully. You know. see, see, he's pitching you our Instagram, which is awesome. But I'm going to if do the same. If you want to chat with us. Discord, right here. All right, so what are we talking about then? What are we talking about? We're talking about 2017 Buddy Fight. It's been, a, it's been an interesting year. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of good, a lot of bad. A lot of toilets. A whole lot of ugly. whole lot. Just look at the guy on the other side. I know. If I can be in the buddy <laughs> fight community, where's the standards, man? Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so yeah, we wanted to take a look back at 2017 as a year for buddy fight uh, because it's been a divisive year, but also look to the future of 2018. Uh, there's some cool stuff on the way in the short term, but it's the long term that's really enticing. Um, let's start with. Uh, the things that happened during the Buddy Fight X season uh, between the anime, the card game, everything that we did like. That we did like. The new archetypes that were actually good and decent for the time that they were relevant, like dual golems. Toilet, even though I think toilets are kind of like a sleeper deck still. (laughs) They're they're, they're, they're still scary good, but they're not going to be like winning every little thing. Um, What else? You got... um, well, obviously, uh, Thunder Empire. You can't forget about Thunder whoa. Empire. Can't we'll be a, talking quite a bit about Thunder Empire. Can't forget Empire. about the chaos. Oh, no. Um, um, what else? Well, Prism there? Dragons were new this season, and they're kind of interesting. Uh, Onis. 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 Uh, what is it? Evil Deity Dragons? Evil Deity really Dragons. Really cool. Really cool, and gone super splashful. Mm-hmm. And nice. that new uh, play style for Death. The Bone. Oh, the Bone stuff. Laborers. One the, of the um, coolest decks around. New mechanics for different uh, archetypes. Legacy support that was actually good. Wait, legacy support? Water. You mean <laughs> that's Water. the only legacy of support Water. he cares about? <laughs> no, but legacy support is a was a huge part of this season, and it's the first season where we really, really needed it. Well, I don't know. Um, like, I sure. guess it was the only season that it had to be done a certain way, because. Mm-hmm. I think every season we typically get like a support, except for the first season, obviously, because it's the first season. It's just introducing everything. And not all of the legacy support we got was good or, you know, like influential, actually bringing decks back. I mean, look how Dragon Knights didn't really do anything. Well, that's because I haven't done anything with Edward the Chaos. Um, but the archetypes that got good. Legacy support got good legacy support. Water, like you mentioned. Water, like they became, before Overturn of Thor came out, even though I still haven't really play tested them against that, it basically became the anti-meta, in my honest opinion. Like, it shut down Thunder Empire a good majority of the time. Um, what else was big out there? Uh, Chaos. Purgatory Knights. Chaos, it, oh. it just... Oops. Um, Purgatory Knights, too, yeah. it, it did mess around with because like oh i'm just going to destroy the monsters you want to destroy and but, yeah there's nothing they could do about that but speaking of purgatory knights they purgatory were knights legacy were support legacy that support. was great just jump them up there uh fifth amity's got some good stuff but they always get good stuff they always get good they always stuff get good. that's the one rule of buddy fight fifth omni always gets the goods um there were a few that got decent like uh thunder knights got okay Support. Uh, you, I was, you play them, I don't know. I was hyped for it. It wasn't as good as it could be, but I mean, mm-hmm. it did all right. Uh, there were some that honestly did nothing. I mean, the Neo Dragon support was pretty decent. I don't know. I played Star Jack Knife World. Ninja support kind of 
sucked. Uh, um, well, no. I guess we didn't really see it here in the States, per se. I, I but played, from what I've seen in like Japan, like they made it some difference. Because they got the promos. And they got the five world. We'll get to that. Five. We'll, we'll, we'll get into some of that. We'll, yeah. we'll get into the bad later. We're, um, let's focus on the. Let's what focus was on the, the other one I was really thinking of, though? Um, that guy. Leviathan, or leave, however it's supposed to be said. I'm pretty sure it's Leviathan. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm gonna stick with it though because I like it. Um, having a truly item focused deck that's like screw the rules. We don't need no monsters. We've needed that for a long time. It's just so ridiculous and over the top with that. It finally made equipment change irrelevant, but still relevant at the same time, because uh, you still have Durandal that's going to be used no matter what, mm-hmm. especially the new one. We uh, we got a lot of good cards. Now there is the argument that we got too many, but there the one thing that was best this season was just sitting there watching the new leaks and going, "Oh my god, it's so broken!" over and over again. So broken, me and you arguing about what cards are actually trash or not. Yes. And you actually being wrong on a lot of cards. Wow. And you're like, damn it, they were actually good. Wow. It's true, um, though. It was true. Uh, I also think the balance... Oh, uh, Executioners and Guardians got some good leg- legacy support. Mm. Interesting, at the very least. Noteworthy. But obviously, they Executioners got the best card ever to be released in X and probably all of Buddy Fight. Until next season. Uh, other good things. The main booster sets were all very solid. Oh, solid. Very, very well solid. done. And uh, ratios were great. You know, oh, the guaranteed secret pack just is something we can't live without ever again. And um, I don't care about that. I almost got a secret pack every other time anyway. It, it, I liked the main booster sets. Uh, another thing. We got the dub back. Yeah. Dalton does not really care personally. I don't even watch for, it myself. For two, for two main, for two main reasons. Two main reasons. Because I love watching the anime. Um, I'm completely caught up. I don't know if you are. Um, Not even close. I've t- attempted to watch the English. Initially, Gao's voice really irritated me, but like I'm thinking about it now. I'm like, yeah, I probably could have gotten past that. But then every time I hear the English commercial in the Japanese subs. And I hear Bots' voice, and I'm just like, yeah, that would never have worked for you. I'm he sorry, like that Bots's would not English have voice. I'm like, no. After hearing the Japanese one for so long, and then hearing that, it was like, nails on a cardboard. It's not as bad as nails on a chalkboard, but, yeah. Um, uh. I don't watch the dub. I don't watch the sub either, though. I do not keep up with the Buddy Fine anime. Uh, generally, how it happens is like I get really into it at the start of a season, but then, then by like fall the off halfway point, of the earth and... yeah, and then I catch up right before the new season comes out. So that that's like my formula with it. Uh, it's not that high of a priority for me. Um, but w- we were actually having lunch, and we posted an image on our Instagram. Hey, hey, uh, of I'll us like having it. lunch, meeting about this very episode. It's very artsy. Dalton took the photo, um, Sorry. and the thing I pointed out then was how good of a gateway to the game the dub is. That's true, I agree, but obviously you're going to have people who watch the sub, get used to that, and then they're going to watch the dub and be like, WTF, what happened to these voices? Like, these um, voices were so much better here and there. The, the tones, the actual, like, accents they have and so forth and so on was so much better here, and then this one's just kind of like... But we're super fans, you know. We've been with Body Fight for the past four years. We know what we want. But for those new people who've never heard of the game, it's a great tool to get them in, which is important to keep a game going on its fourth, now fifth year alive. True. That's true. Um, so it's a that's a big thumbs up from me, and it's one of the best things they did this season. Bringing it back at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Maybe. Few more things because, like, the rest of the characters, I didn't have a problem with their voices in English. Mm-hmm. Like, Gaito's, I think, was like, I like it better than Japanese, but sometimes the cons outweigh the pros. And, and you know, we don't talk about the anime very, very much. That's true. Um, I thought the plot overall was pretty decent, it was kind of Wait, retreading was, on 100. Yeah, the hun- but if you're gonna copy a season, that's the one to copy. <laughs> you know, that's a great season, so I get it. Um, I think the new characters introduced were all pretty interesting. 
Mm -hmm. uh, there was some like decent three, character uh, development. And they ag actually, the best thing about the entire season, they acknowledge that sleeves exist. Impact sleeves. In not, 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 impact not, sleeves. Not just sleeves. In the back door. I have to say the humor in this season was on point, much better than what Triple D had for humor. Um, I feel like Triple D was more of the kitty version, and now you kind of have the teen version, mm -hmm. which is actually kind of like a nice little thing that, but at least Bushi's doing is they give you the kitty version first, and then they kind of go teen version, which is, makes it a little bit dark, as 100 was to the original. Like they're basically continuations, but they kind of show you the two different aspects they can easily take for it. Like they could have been 100. Throughout the entire thing, or they could have been OG through the entire thing, but they decided to like mix and match them and kind of have it that way. Something else I liked from this season, totally not talking about the anime anymore. Uh, we got some adjustments to how different rarities look or feel. Uh, the one I was thinking of in particular was SPs. Uh, I really like how the new SPs look. I think they actually feel like a premium thing. Um, I like the SPs. Uh, the double rares didn't see a change, and neither did triple. Um, foils did, but not till halfway through. And we are big fans of the new foil, which is basically just the original foil, right? Well, you see, you talk about how you like the SPs. I'm a huge fan of OG SPs. I find those ones to probably be the best. These ones aren't bad, per se. I think the gold border is unnecessary. That easily You'd like them with. without the gold? I would like them without it, because then it gives them more full art look. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, they're all right, especially for the Dungeon World items. They're okay. The I gold think, border around those are fine. I think the important thing for me is like it helps differentiate them from just like triple rares or secret pack cards a little well, more. Well, you see, that would have been perfectly fine if they didn't change the triple rare to gold foiling. But that's for... Other topics. <laughs> Other topics. Yeah, um, and the change of foils is oh, the foil. oh. well, well liked. We're both huge fans of that. Oh, some of the best. Uh, and a lot of foil cards that have come out ever since Level Up. Whew. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. So They've done a very good job. With so that. clean. Uh, also, they introduced a new rarity. The, e the uh, ERs. Um, somewhat. <laughs> somewhat, yeah. Uh, we've only had them in the one set so far. Right. And level up, and I believe in the next set they're going to be giving us the question mark yeah. parody again. So it's like, bushy. What are you make, doing? Make up mine now. Um, you got anything else to add for the real good stuff? Um, actually having colored buddy rares. Oh yes. Is actually. Oh yeah. White I, rice. I. I don't almost think we can forgot. Ever go back, can we? They're so. No, good. not anymore. I mean, with the exception of the uh, the. Gear God from the uh, dual chest who kind of sucks. Oh, well, it would have been fine if the name would have been legible. Yeah. That was the only problem with that one. Otherwise, it looks nice. But the bots looks nice. There have been a few that we were disappointed in with their colors because they been... looked a certain color in Japan. And then when we got like, like, like the teal one for the oh, weapon. For Durandal. For Durandal. Oh, that looks so good. And then it was, it was all right. But the one I was really thinking of was the... um. Was it bots? The one that bots had that was supposed to be orange, but it ended up looking more gold. Yeah, still. wasn't it the first booster set? I think so. Yeah, I think so. And I was like, oh, that's disappointing. That was disappointing. But otherwise, I love the color. It makes Buddy Rares more exciting. Um, makes me want to actually try to get one so to run it as the Buddy type yeah. deal. Um, but I, SPs I like are them. still the better rarity, but that's, that's what. <laughs> I do really like the colored buddy rares. Uh, so that's a lot of good things this season has done. Do you have anything <laughs> else, or are we ready to move on? Um, other good things. Other good things real good. Um, reviving. You almost forgot about that because we're like Darkness Dragon World. Oh, oh. Reviving oh, oh. of archetypes and reviving of playstyles mm. slash changing playstyles. So like Darkness Dragon World being literally a cluster cluster fill in the blank <laughs> uh -huh. to now being heavily focused on sets and being 
more controlling and so forth. And what other ones? Um, Death Talica actually being more aggro instead Death of Death Talica being... actually being kind of good? Well, he was always good, no matter what. But when it was the old one, Christian, this is a little hate towards you, being complete douches, decided <laughs> like, all right, we're not going to attack you, so you can't refresh your deck. It's like, <laughs> stalling, man. Um, call the judge on you. <laughs> I think Darkness Dragon World is the king of this year. Like, if we had to pick that is one world to be the MVP of this season, it was Darkness Dragon World. Uh, it got so good throughout the year. I'm being resurrected and revised and so forth, yes. But if I have to pick an MVP world, you know I gotta pick my boy's Katana. Katana that, world. That water, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this something we're talking about, and we'll get into the worlds that did not fit this category later. Believe me, we will. Um, the worlds that went from being kind of bad at the end of Triple D or just not relevant to being very relevant, uh, the big ones we can talk about, Darkness Dragon World, absolutely at number one. Well, they were always relevant at the end of Triple D. They were just so all over the place that it was hard to mm -hmm. see where they fit in. Like, everything Darkness Dragon World got this season was good, though. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, they finally had identity. Katana World as well. Mm. You know, Japanese sure, the ninja blades. support and the Japanese blades didn't really... Well, Japanese blades was actually quite nice. Sure, it wasn't much, but it was just enough to actually mm -hmm. keep them around. And the introduction of Onis. And Onis, probably the best competitive deck that can be budget. No, hands down. And that, not even talking about the monster that is water. The only real knock you can say is, you know, they didn't really give Skull Warriors anything. <laughs> Not much. Well, tech. Well, they gave because, them a little bit, but not much. because of water. They kind of got. Yeah. But um, Skull Warriors, they have to have a whole. And then what? Dungeon World got pretty good as well. Uh, uh, Demon Lords got a new Demon Lords went archetype. From, Demon Lords went from being the joke of buddy fight for years. No, that was chest. Oh. We've got them to talk about, too. Yes. Uh, to being relatively solid. Mm hmm For uh, some time until Thunder Empire. And Adventurers like, hey. got some ridiculous oh, good aggro stuff. Oh, got stupid. They it got did get pretty stupid. stupid. Um, the wow. Knights now have now their support. Now Knights. Oh. Oof. Building um, those. So that should Even be some good, you know, uh, like Miseria support has come out. Mm -hmm. The only big knock is, you know, they... Didn't really give anything to our boys' uh, traps. I think they gave them enough this season. Sure, it wasn't a whole lot. It was basically just one spell. But I'm in, hoping, con in conjunctions with one of the cards, it's kind of I'm hoping to see more either in the Climax Booster or next year. Next year. I'll, give it, year. I'll give it to We're me. in 2018 already. I'll give it to... No, no, 2019. That's oh, when they get 2019. it. 2019. <laughs> That's when they get it. All no, right. Um, definitely, I see at least... More monsters, um, better items, mm -hmm. an actual item. <laughs> okay, so, and chess. Chess was the out of left field. Ah, whoa. And no one saw that coming. No one. And it was amazing. It wasn't just like we're taking a bad deck and making it good. It was we're taking Memes something no one's bigger. thought about for years that were meme -y. And making them good and even meme here. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. With the Katana World build and the Dragon World build. Both pretty good. Until, That's the type of support I want to see. Until uh, certain cards got revised. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So moving on from the good. We've been happy for long enough. Uh, it's um, time to talk about the bad. And to be fair... I think this season has the most to talk about in this category of any. That's true. But there was a lot of good. Keep in mind, you know, those good things as we move into the bad. Uh, bad number one. We got to address the elephant in the room, don't we? Thunder Empire. Oh, I thought you weren't talking about very good generic support cards. We'll get to that. I actually okay. like that, honestly. It's it's a mixed review. Okay. It's a mixed review for me. Uh, okay, so Thunder Empire. Thunder Empire was fine until the flag came out. 
Because, like, you can still stop them and so forth, I guess. But they were manageable when they were just Dragon World. I as think... soon as you added all these other worlds that became a little bit more broken, like the size 2 El Quixote, the Dark Dragon World size 2, can't remember its name. River Pain. Yeah, River Pain. Um, what are the big ones? Um, the Ninja. Like, once you started giving them that, they became kind of stupid consistent. I think uh, you're you're not quite giving the OG Dragon World build enough, not credit, but, you know, presence as it should have. It changed things even back then. When it oh, came out... I was water, so I, I basically shafted them. When it and a few other decks from the first set, I mean, it's not just a Thunder Empire problem, but it's kind of the poster child for it. Uh, when it came out, it said, hey, take all your decks from Triple D and throw them in the trash. No, 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 no. It's, well, I guess. For, for, I'll let you continue. I'll let you continue. Um, you're either going to have to say, I'm not playing this anymore, or sit that deck in a cupboard and wait for it to get legacy support, because nothing was able to hit the numbers anymore that they needed to. And not just numbers in, like, attack or whatnot. Just general strength and viability tanked for a lot of decks because of how good Onis and Thunder Empire and even Prism Dragons were in the beginning. And the difference between those decks and Thunder Empire is Thunder Empire kept getting better and better consistently. Yeah, I, I would say Oni Assassins, after being introduced, kind of plateaued. Prism Dragons kind of fell off planet for a while until the most recent set mm -hmm. and now have spiked probably above thunder empire thunder empire is thunder empire um the graph chaos. for thunder empire has been like that you know there it was never a well there was a like, slight little curve and then it went back up slight very slight like you would not have noticed it at first glance there has never been a time before in buddy fight where i i distinctly remember this sitting down and playing against someone who was playing the brand new Thunder Empire deck fully built, and I had one of my Triple D decks, and I said, there's no way my deck can compete against you. That has never happened before in Buddy Fight. And there are lots of reasons people float around this has happened. But the important thing is it has. Now, raising the power levels and you know power creep is normal, but it was a little excessive this season. But I think they realize that, mm -hmm. and they've been working to fix that. Number one, uh, when well, part of the issue is when we got the new flag for Thunder Empire, they shot up like crazy, and they needed something to compete with that. So the meta wasn't Thunder Empire or you lose. Um, so they, instead of you know taking it down by banning stuff or whatnot, not rec saying that's what they should have done, uh, they took another deck and put it at the same level in the chaos. The Chaos, and now Prism Dragons. And now Prism. So they're giving counters, but that does leave a lot of older decks in the dust. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say that I think going into 2018 as we are, uh, the meta's in a healthier place than it was six months ago. I say two months ago. Two months. Yeah, like right when Overturn came out was probably the uh, low point for the meta. Yeah, yeah. probably the low point. Um, so I, I do think they're getting better with that, but it's it still cool. a pretty big negative. What else was bad about this year for Buddy Fight? The gen high rarity generic support, like Bots X Link, like it oh. wasn't specific. I thought you were I thought you were saying generic, like generic cards. No, I know what you're no, talking. No, generic about. cards were perfect. This mess. I'm this talking about up. the high rarity cards like Bots X Link, um, Banquet, Banquet of the Unrighteous. Uh, Even though it, that one took a little while before people realized what it was all, what it was truly good for, um, hiding Oni, which actually snuck up on people. Star Believer, even though you don't see that card used too much, mm -hmm. it's still about sixteen bucks because of how good it is. Uh, I'm trying to think of more off the top of my head there right now. Tons. There's tons. Uh, what is uh, the Darkness Dragon World that had? Ah, uh, bomb, bomb. No, that's bomb. not quite generic. It's not quite generic, but it's Black Ritual and. Mm -hmm. Which it's close. It's easy because you can have an item that's a black dragon. You can have a spell that's a set it's spell techable. that's a black dragon. It's super techable. Tech um, 
Splash Wolf, there we go. So I can't help but notice, but the majority of those were triple rare spells. Triple rares, a few double. Oh, uh, Heaven's Gift. That was another big one. Uh, I don't think so. I think so. I don't think so. I mean, no... This is where we differ. No double rare spell should be approaching $20. Hiding Oni and Star Believer are both approaching $20. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. It's another one for the list, certainly. Um, I but high rarity generic staples, bad idea. No, they're not bad ideas. They were just too overpowered. Like, they technically had the right idea. Because I don't find it, well, Banquet's probably a one exception, because I don't find it to be too stupid. Okay. No, I think Banquet's actually pretty fair. It's mostly fair. But, like, being able to have Hiding Oni, and I could just splash that into my water deck. Oh, I'm just going to drop a soul from the size 3. I'm never going to really use it soul. I don't really care about it soul. It just plus. And then... Basically with, uh, what's the other one? Um, Bots X Link. Oh, splash that into Sun Dragons. Make them relevant. I can gain gauge now. Easily. Here's the issue. When you have those cards at high rarities, high demand, to that extreme, uh, it creates, one, a shortage, but two, it scares people away from playing decks that they otherwise would. Because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make the game... Budget friendly. Yeah, very much so. Like, budget players had a hard time this year in a lot of cases. Even though I did find a pretty good Thunder Empire deck. Oh, there's certainly a few very good budget decks. But well, I guess it was Thunder Empire. You're certainly limited this season with that mm -hmm. uh, because of cards like Bots X Link. And, uh, oh, um, Drago Succeed was another one. Oh, Drago Succeed. Yeah. That. I knew I was getting another triple, right? There were too many of those this time. I can understand one or two. I mean, we've had that before. Look at uh, uh, the only one I can think of offhand was Call Super Machine got like crazy expensive because of how easy it was to tech in. I was thinking Devil Stigma. Devil back, Stigma is a back yeah. way back in the day, way um, back. So you see how that affects the game negatively. And I mean, you and I are pretty big players of the game. We both have a binder full of cards. We both have decks. We both regularly buy. Tons of cards for this game. Mm -hmm. And we still each had trouble getting some of these. I think I probably pulled two bots X links ever. It was a real And challenge. we all know who has that card. It's, it's Christian. If you don't know that, it's Christian. Uh, it, it's really quite frustrating. And I think the worst part, we'd go, I would sit there at my desk and I'd check Buddy Spoiler. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. dropping them. Um, and I'd see a new card appear, and I'd say, oh, this is so cool. Then i click for more information and see, oh, it's a triple error. Forget that. <laughs> right. That's not a good sign. Yeah, it's not. That's really bad. Um, so I think that's all we really have to say about that one. Let's move on to the one that I think you and I personally have a lot to talk about with, the alternate boosters. Ushi. I don't know if you watch this at all, but I, if you do, take this into consideration. Stop it with the goddamn alternate boosters. They suck. They're horrible. Ratios suck major, but it's, ugh. Especially like somebody like me who can get their hands on so much of the product. It's kind of Stupid with the ratios. Sure, it's nice to be able to get like five triple rares, seven double rares. But when you have to sit there and think, well, this card's probably short printed. This one's also probably short printed. And then the, the sought after cards or cards that I would like to just have for certain decks. That's kind of stupid. Like, well, what alternate booster could they have that I was talking about? Was it four dimensions? Not four Third. dimensions. Um, Three of them this set. There was no, well, Crossing was, Generations. Crossing Generations, that one. That's the one I was talking about. That one could have been an alternate booster, but what you could have done is done one side, completely Star Dragon World focus, have that art and so forth, and the other side be Dragon World. That would have been fine. It would basically kind of fix the problem I think... somewhat. But otherwise, alternate boosters need to die. If this was a yeah. perfect world we would just get the singular extra boosters. And that can't 
always happen. You know, they've got costs, and it's more expensive to do it that way. If you, but, really, if you really got you, you can just send us the Japanese box arts, but then throw in the English cards. If you're going to do something like that, guys, you need to do it right. And I think they started to realize that. I think Crossing Generations was not that bad yeah, it was for getting stuff you needed. Oh, it was pretty bad. But the real issue came with evolution and mutation. <sighs> it was bad. virtually impossible to get the specific cards you need. I mean, the single reason that one Damios is so expensive is because you have to pull it from the secret pack only. Well, there's two, uh, dif- there's two different there Damioses. There's two <laughs> Purgatory Knight secret packs. And three Darkness Dragon World ones. It's so dumb how they did that. And it was so hard to get anything you wanted from the set. It just forced us. Most people I know just bought singles of the set because it was so hard. And I think they kind of realized that with Evolution and Mutation. Cause Hence why Level Up Level Up was pretty was better. It was better. I'm not going to Level Up was pretty good. And now it looks like they're really trying with the Climax Booster, you know, we'll uh, changing some cards' rarities, making Secret Packs even easier to get. And, and there was also that, that we heard about that the secret packs aren't secret packs. Secret packs aren't going to contain cards in the set that are rares, but have different cards and have them at the same foiling. Mm-hmm. Plus, which, there, you have a you. chance of getting two secret packs in one box, which is pretty cool. Which I've been waiting for. Um, the thing with it is that all makes sense, and you need to do that with every alternate booster if you're giving us stuff like that. Not that specifically, but you need to think about that. There should never be a set where we have 20 different double rares and no way to get them easier. Mm -hmm. It it sucked. It really did. And, I mean, like, I like a lot of the cards from Evolution and Mutation. I don't buy that set. (sighs) Like, if I'm like, I want to crack a box, my go-to is Chaos Control Crisis, Right. Or if I feel adventurous, I'll go with like a oh, BT or one too. box. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about Daryl. <laughs> or, you know, something like that. Even Crossing Generations, if I feel really out there, I'd never buy a box of Evolution and Mutation. Nah, eh, I still do just because I hope. I hope. <laughs> you hope? I hope. Um, what else do you got? What else do I got? Um... More, I guess it's probably more of a personal thing, but with recent specialty flags, specialty banners, whatever you want to call them, um, not being able to allow generic cards, like Thunder Empire, it, it makes right? somewhat sense, but at the same time it doesn't, because like Thunder Empire Fang, it can't utilize soul removal to my knowledge, and remove would be the perfect solution, but they can't use generic cards, I'd, which kind of defeats the purpose of having generic cards. I get where Bushi comes from with it. You know, they don't want them to be too broken. But in general, I don't see many occasions where allowing generic cards would make those decks more broken because they're broken as it is, right? Right. Instead, not having the ability to use generics makes the generics weaker. Exactly. It makes them less sought for to an extent. Um, that just makes people either, well, if I'm going to run Thunder Empire Fang or the Chaos, well, I, I know I can't take in the usual, like, Barbed Wire. Like, one of the best generic cards ever to be released. Well, it's like, well, I can't utilize that card, so, all right. Plus, it makes sideboard takes... planning for those decks way less interesting. Because instead of having, like, 50 different okay choices for cards to put in your sideboard to combat the that mirror match or other decks. Yeah, like four good ones maybe. And the rest is just filling space. Right. So is that everything for that? Because I got to get on to my personal big beef. You got big beef? I got big beef. And a get lot of people it. will know this because um, I've talked about it before. I especially got into it uh, during the live stream that we did. Mm-hmm. Um, Bushi Road made me so mad this year. Uh, when we talked earlier about decks that got better because they got support this year and, you know, moved up, if there was a tier list of worlds, they'd be moving up that rank. There's one that went from somewhere on list to bottom of the barrel. Magic World. 
continue. Magic World got jack this year. Now, there are asterisks on there. They did receive a couple cards and a couple good ones. Nice Thunder was all right. Uh, that new Magical Goodbye one that's a Thunder Empire is good. Mm-hmm. Thunder X uh, Goodbye, I believe. It was. There was that dual weapon from the first, from BTO1. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. There's that other, the Chaos weapon, which is also pretty good. There are, I just was able to name four cards from an entire year. And part of that problem was, one, they seemed to ignore it. It got no main booster set support. But also, they did give us support in Five World Builders. <laughs> which I was like, the day it was announced, I'm like, hallelujah. I, I, I'm so happy. I am excited. And then Bushi goes, eh, Christian, can you just put a troll face on the screen? Um, they trolled me so hard with it. That came out, what, in August in Japan? I don't know, but Something all I like know, that. we still don't got it here in America. It is January, my dude. And we haven't gotten it. And we're supposed to get it, what, in February? Who knows? Or like, March? I, I, they kind of announced it, but we haven't heard anything, really. And, like, uh, and it's not just the Magic World support. That annoys me enough. But there's other great stuff in it that's not broken. That's good legacy support for some decks. Great generic support that wouldn't be hard to get, hopefully. Um, and brings back some decks that we haven't either seen in a while or ever even close to meta. Like Asgard. No one's seen Asgard in the meta. They did it. Pretty good support in the last set. Yeah, and there's even better stuff in Five World Builders. Uh, Kachina World has some great stuff in there, which is all around. Ancient World has some amazing staple cards that they're not getting. Uh, I mean, there's the Legend World stuff, need I say more, right? Uh, what's that one uh, nullify that lets you discard to draw? Whew. Yeah, the new Wider Sakal one. Um. There's so much good in that, and they haven't given it to us. And just like with the alternate boosters and how badly they are managed, this shows me that overall the big message I got from this season is Bushi Road does not care about English players. Come on, Bushi. I think we're friends. There's also the issue of not getting promos that we should get. And just promos being way harder to get than they should be in some cases. Um, and promos being like, um, what was it? The ones for um, Rainbow Striker. Like, once they're gone, at least at our locals, it's going to be next to impossible to get the next one because it's just straight from Bushi and it was a one print of those promos. The relationship between Bushi Road and their English player base has never been worse. I think that's fair to say. The only time I can think of that they got close to that level was when we got the uh, dual deck in the first season. The first like special deck thing, which was between Dragon World and... Oh, the triple deck? No, it was a double, the first one. It was Dragon World and Legend World, focusing on Kiri and Gal. And instead of releasing it, they released a couple cards in the perfect pack, like Boomerang Dragon. Then a couple cards in uh, Break to the Future. And a couple cards in... Um, uh, Neo Enforcers, like spread out between those three sets and it sucked and no one liked it. That's nothing compared to some of the things they've done this season. That's that's very true. Very, very true. And but how's that rambling? <laughs> that was, it was kind of enjoyable and kind of fun to get it all off my chest. Um, so that really sucked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's very true. It did suck. Do you have anything else that really sucked about this season? The lack of drum. All right, I'm done with the drum stuff. Okay, I'm done with the drum stuff. I'm done with the drum stuff. All right, so that's just about it for our big rants. So what we're going to do, I don't like to just, you know, light a match on all the gasoline and walk out as everything burns. I like to offer some constructive criticism. So we're going to list just a couple simple things they can do, that Bushiroad can do, if you're listening, guys, uh, to make Season 5... If it's called Buddy Fight GGG, right? Triple G. Triple G. Yo. <laughs> GG. G. G. It's too gangster. Um, I like it. Uh, what they can do to make this season great, right? Better. 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 Okay. 
You start. <laughs> I start. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, this is about five things, right? Yeah. We'll start with number zero. More drum. More drum. Number zero. Um, but you should have better zero. <laughs> that would have been too much. All right. Um, but for real, number one, alternate boosters either rework them so that they're actually better or just abolish them and just give us the extra boosters. Like I'm willing to pay a little extra for extra boosters. Like if they have to be a little more expensive, so be it. Yeah, if they like, have to be like say 60 bucks instead of 50-ish or whatever. I miss much supposed to be. when we used to get niche sets. Uh, for example, last, no, in uh, Buddy Fight 100, they released the uh, 100 Demons one mm -hmm. is the one I'm thinking of. Uh, the Terror, no. Terror the Inverse. No, no, those. that's the perfect pack, the one before Which that. Which is basically, yeah. Uh, yes. So the 100 Demons set, it was an extra boost. Uh, with... Lord of 100 Thunders. Thing. Yes, there we go. That was all 100 Demons. I did not play 100 Demons, so I didn't have to worry about that set whatsoever. I just skipped it. Whereas Christian at the time was really big into them, he bought a bunch of it, and he knew it was a good investment for him because everything in that box would be something he could use. That's very true. Whereas now... It's much harder to build a specific deck or get someone into the game by saying you only have to buy this set or even the fact that I'm like, well, I want to buy a box of Evolution Mutations for this support, but there's like an 80% chance I'm not getting it. A5. <laughs> oh, no. A5. <laughs> so that's frustrating, and I'd like to see extra boosters back. If not better working of alternate boosters. Because we don't want the, um, what set was it? Was it Four Dimensions? No. Mm -hmm. which, which set brought in um, Super Heroines? I think that was, no. We don't want that fiasco. Let's just say that. We don't want that fiasco all over again. We don't want that. that. So what, it was like Great Fighter Z mixed in. I don't remember, it was, man. It was a horrible fiasco. Um, number three. Um, I'm actually blanking on all of them now. Yeah. Uh, one thing I could say, less crazy staples. Yes. Or, yeah. Or if you're going to make good, solid, generic staple cards, put them at low rarity. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, other card games do that all the time. I mean, how many people bought boxes of, uh, what is it, Aether Revolt for Magic the Gathering to get fatal pushes because it was an uncommon? Right. I mean, we've had that in Buddy Fight. I mean, there are times where I'm like, yeah, I'll crack a couple packs of uh, uh, Assault of the Omni Lords just to see if I get a barbed wire. Exactly. Good if anything, card. Bushi, I think that would increase the number of packs you sell mm -hmm. without breaking anything. Very true. Um, yeah. How about number three? Uh, make the anime interesting. Uh, I mean, this season was not bad. I, I rather enjoyed the parts I have watched. Um, don't pull a triple D. Yeah. Don't pull a triple <laughs> don't D. Be don't a triple pull D. a triple D. That season's probably the most... No, it is the worst season of Buddy Fight. Keep the humor. Keep the humor. Uh, you don't necessarily have to keep the darker side. You know, you can still do your whole switching off and on thing. And but, feel free to do side stuff like that whole mini arc where gal was dead <laughs> that was really interesting don't just stay to the main plot i like that stuff or maybe do some side episodes where you focus on like hey what's this character doing you know on their right. own almost like um which one's doing that kind of right now like boruto like do something like that like sure you technically have the main character in gal but you have like maybe a little mini arc within the thing it's like two to three episodes on Gaito per se or some new characters that you bring in mm -hmm. you know to kind of develop them more instead of just being oh hi look new character now All they're right. gone I'm gonna pass back to you for advice for Bushi Road for number three okay what do you got advice for him yep um more drum <laughs> You've gotten past that. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I have to say consistency in Legend World. That I know, would be nice. And Magic World. And a few other worlds that have but problems. Legend's that, the one you're really looking at. Legend's the big one, especially 
Like, writers have called for the longest time. Like, they've been horrible. They've legitly been crap. The only time they were good is when they were initially out because it was just hard to counter them for some time, but that ran out super fast. And then right now, wider circles and fairy toilets are decent, but like heroes, sure, they have Leviathan, which makes them good, but normal heroes, I guess, need more support. Um, Asgard needs a lot more support. Um, what else? Olympus. Like, so what you're saying that. is you want a Legend World only extra booster that we actually get. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, or at least a trial deck. So another thing, we'll count this as number two, I guess. This is kind of minor, and I have not brought it up to Dalton, but I just thought of this, so it's got to oh. be said now. Oh, no. More trial decks. We got four trial decks this entire season, right? Five, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, because there was the first two when the game is when the season started. Mm-hmm. I want to say there was a Darkness Dragon World one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there was Chaos, and then there was the new Thunder Empire. Yeah, yeah. That kind of blows. Not <laughs> not trying to be like that. Like that's not enough, and they're not interesting enough. Uh, I think season one did it best with this. We got sure it's the starting season, but we got what is it seven in the first season. And some very interesting or even niche ones, like the Osmodi one was not something people were expecting and it had a very unique play style. Right. Or even if it's not obviously seven or something like that, it could still be five, but a little bit more spaced out the correct way slash variety. More variety in it. Like a Legend World one would be fantastic. We've never got to easy, Legend World one. Easy access to a Legend World flag. One of the hardest flags to get. Um, what other ones are out there? Um, Maybe use trial decks to bring back some archetypes. Um, like or lots art. of things. Like I, art. Just, like art. <laughs> okay, you're pushing I, it a little I'm bit. I'm trying. Like, see, these are the things that Bushy's done. Like, they've introduced these and just basically like, all right, they're dead to us. Like, if you're going to have them there, like, at least do something for them. Um, um, all right, so I'm ready to move on to number one. Okay. Wait, I'm all over the place. I don't even remember where I'm at. All right. Yeah, sure. Number one. Absolute number one Bushy Round. And this is a little bit more of a personal thing. No ball characters. Oh, my bad. No, not that. <laughs> Why is Bushy Road, and this isn't just Buddy Fight. I'm calling them out for every card game right now. Why are you so absolutely terrible at working with content creators? Ooh. I have worked with t- several companies, you know, throughout TCG Buzz uh, for our other channels as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've done a decent amount of work, and I know how this does. And no one has been bad at this as Bushi Road. I've gotten better response from uh, Namco Bandai for Dragon Ball Super. Uh, I've even like if I message Wizards of the Coast right now, who has no idea we exist, most likely, and say, "Hey, we." One out of 500 of our videos is magic related. They'd say, cool, glad to know you you exist. They'd respond at the very least. Bushiro doesn't do that. Like, I, I've tried many a times to, you know, work with them on things, not necessarily get free stuff, because we don't care that much about that. But just say, hey, can just you recognize. send us information when a new set's coming out or, you know, stuff like that. Basic things. And they don't do any of it. But I guess that's just the way Bushi operates. So that's a big thing you can improve on. Improve your media outreach. It's vital for companies, especially for ones this seen, long in the tooth. Not even that, just in today's day and age. Mm-hmm. Like, we are a heavy mobile slash uh, media era, like generations and all that whatnot. Like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, once upon a time, Vine, rest in peace. Snapchat, like those are where we really communicate a lot. So it's like you can utilize that more. You know, I don't know. It's, it's bushy, I guess. It's bushy. You know, they've done outreach with content creators, as far as I know, like twice in the past year, where they worked with someone or sent someone free product. 
or anything like that. Uh huh. That's abysmal. Whereas Magic the Gathering, with their community, they do thousands of those things. And sure, they're big. Right? Mm -hmm. But Yu-Gi-Oh! does tons of that. You want to be those top players? You need to act like them. You know, you want your games to be a success? You need to work with people. Because we're hardcore fans of this game. We will preach it to high heavens and we get new people in. Right? Oh, well, at least we attempt. Well, yeah. Um, we should at least be able to ask you a question. And we can't. So I'm going to leave it on that. Do you have anything else to say? Bushi, stop being like Bushi. That's why I'll <laughs> leave it off that. All right. Um, and otherwise, if I had to grade the past year, get the C. Ooh, grading. I didn't even think about this. I mean, obviously, we don't have grades for the previous years to compare to. Uh, I, yeah, I think a C is fair because there's a lot of good but a lot of bad. And I want to see in the future them keep the good but drop some of that bad. I, yep. I definitely, I, I like do... legacy support. Perfect. Keep doing that. Um, better cards and so forth. The keep rarities are pretty solid. Pretty I like solid on rarities. At. Keep doing that. But drop the stupid, ah, stupid crap, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I do want to stay just as a disclaimer at the end. Just it. it I'm not trying to rant because I hate this game or anything. I love this game. That's why I care. Um, and I do want to say that even though we've dealt with a lot of BS in the past year for the game, I'm very, very optimistic for this year. You know, I, I'm seeing 2018 is, you know, there's only one way to go, and that's up. Yeah, hopefully we finally get some sleeves. Yeah, Bushi. I want sleeves. <laughs> All right, so that is it for this episode. Alrighty, make sure to like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe. Hit the bell to get the notifications though. Leave a comment down below on what you think about this past year. Or Buddy Fight or Bushi Road in general. Or any of your favorite card games that you're playing right Just now. Leave us thoughts in the comments. We love reading your comments and responding to them. Uh, I do that on a daily basis. And no matter what the comment is, even if it's uh, a comment... We got a comment recently within the past few weeks about someone saying that I look like I was on the spectrum. That was the comment. Um, I don't care. I love reading those comments. That got some good laughs. Yeah. 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 So uh, leave us some comments. Check out our Discord. Join our Discord. Not just yeah. check it out. Join don't just it. check it out. Join it. Join talk it. With us. Talk with us. Uh, tell us like, yo, Jacob, you were... Uh, you were spitting out some fire in this one. What's up? Or or you're an idiot, Jacob. Yeah, or, and I'm used or, to it. Or Dolphin, you're quite enough quiet. It's like to be fair. And check out our Instagram where you can see a lot of behind the scenes stuff and you know, somewhat see or at what least we're hanging polls. out doing and uh, you know when we go to our LGS stuff we pull stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And anything else from you? I think that is it. Above all else. Keep it classy, y'all. Thanks for listening to TCG Buzz. New episodes can be found on TCGBuzz.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. For box openings, deck profiles, and more, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.